Hello, hello, Mike German here from Visual Animation. Now, as promised from the previous video, I said I was going to show you how to do a lightsaber effect within Cinema 4D and with no plugins, okay? This is all generated within the program. And I'll just run this render that I've done now just so you can have a look at the difference between these two effects. So what I've got here, so I'll just let that play through to the end. Okay, what I've got here is one of them uses a light object or a light. It's not an object, is it? One of them uses a light and the other one uses a material. Now, I did a similar uh, video to this. Let me just pause that. Um, for the, the afterburner on the back of an X-Wing. Uh, very similar, really, um, that you can use these two different techniques. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you now how these two work within cinema and it's really a, um, a preference at the end of the day is which one you think, I know which one I prefer, but which one you think is more realistic or more suitable for what you wanna do. So let's just close that down. So this is the, these are the models. So I thought the best thing to do, like I always do, is delete the, um, the lightsaber pieces away from there on both of them just take them out completely, right? So we've just got empty lightsaber hilts. Now let's build one at a time. So let's start with, actually we'll take out the material as well because I've got a material there that we need to start again with. So let's start with the one that uses the light. Okay, let's just pick one of the Darth Vader's, one over here. And we're gonna put a, a light in there. Um, and act as a lightsaber. So what I do, let's just close these down and make it all a bit more tidy. Right, let's choose a, let's choose a spotlight. Okay. And what we're going to do, let's just, let's turn, let's turn off the other two. Oh, not that one. Let's turn off the other two models and let's just use this one on the screen. Right, so we have our light. Our light at the moment is a spotlight, which is not what we want. We want to turn that into, if we click on here where it says spot, we want to choose a parallel spot. Okay, and we need this spotlight to, well, obviously be a little bit smaller. It's a little bit too big at the moment. So let's have a look under under details on the light. We want to take the outer radius down. Let's just drop that down to five for now. All right, that's looking more like I'd expect. And then the visibility, the outer distance here. Let's bring that down to seventy-five. Um, and then the inner to about seventy. All right, we'll set those. We'll come back to let's take the show illumination off as well because we're going to get we're going to get um quite a lot of lines appearing everywhere now so here is our light now let's just pop that back on a minute actually you can just see which way it's going okay right so what we can do is can take the end of it here where the yellow dot is and just just drag that to a more normal size and then let's um spin which way are we spinning it that way okay so we're going up there about 90. now it's not actually going to be 90 because the lightsaber's at an angle now i showed you this before how to get that to sit within that um lightsaber hilt properly what we do is you put the light under the lightsaber so we put the light under here and then we go up to tools, axis, center to parent. Okay, it might not be the right orientation, but it has jumped, the center of that light has jumped to the middle of, oh dear, now I've lost the, now I've lost it. If you ever do that, by the way, and you, you've moved it and the camera's just taking you somewhere else, there should be a little yellow, or orangey yellow arrow um, showing you where that model is that you're highlighted on here where your light is so if you click on that it will bring it right back into view 
Okay, it's just a little little tip. I don't know how long it's been in cinema. That's probably always been there, but I found it quite useful. Um, right, so now we've got the light. Um, we need to just mess with this orientation just to bring the top of it up here like this. Okay, Let's spin it around there. We can go over here. And we need to look at this from different views. I mean, it's not too bad where it is there. I mean, what I would say is when you set this up originally from the beginning, it's probably going to be better to do it. Let's try, oh, actually, let's try 90 and see if it just works. Oh, of course it does. Of course it does. Yeah, okay. It's 90 because we parented it to the hilt, didn't we? Okay. And because it was parented to the hilt, um, when you then when you then apply the orientation of the light, it's going to work from the, the hilt that it's just been parented to. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. I was just going to say, probably the best way to align these is to start with the lightsaber completely square on, um, you know, without the angle, and then you can apply the light and then apply it to the character. But no, that, that actually works really well. So if you parent your light to the object, and then you put in 90 degrees or naught or whatever, you know, um, proper increments, it should actually line up like it's just done there. Rightio, rightio, where are we? Let's go back to the light. Let's have a look. All right, we'll click on the light. And um, I think at the moment we can do this visually, which I prefer to do, is you pick one of these little um, yellow dots here and we can just push that in, okay? And we can get that just to go inside the hilt there of the lightsaber. And then for the length, I still think we're a bit long, aren't we? So let's just bring that down somewhere, somewhere there. Okay, so now we need to have a look at this light now because if you render this now, nothing will show, okay? Because we haven't applied anything to this light at all we've just we've just popped in the light in the right place so now let's go through here and have a look at what we can do to make that visible and look right so first thing i would do is because it, this is um this is a plasma light weapon it's very intense heat and light so on the intensity of the light here i would put that up to say 400 uh, parallel spot is correct. Shadow, don't think we need to do a shadow, but we do need visible light. Okay, so let's just choose visible light. And now this goes goes white. Okay, if you take that off, look, it disappears. If you put visible light on, you've now got that. And that indicates the visible part of this light. So if I now do a quick render, you'll see that we should get that to show. Okay nearly get there we're nearly getting there so let's um let's have a look now at so we've got a visible light um we go to the details tab um let's see what we can do all oh, visibility it's one or the other other i always get confused between the details and the visibility there's similar things on here that there's so if we go visibility and we've got our distance which is set here yeah, that's our distance set. So we'll keep that at 75. Um, we need to put in a gradient on here to show it going from intense white in the center to that red glow on the edge. Okay, so if we put in on this, the, the one to the right, if we put in the, the red, and I think it's sort of an orangey red, isn't it? And put that in there and what i do is i just do test renders all the time because at the moment we've just got this little bit of a uh, little bit of red on the top of it and not down the down the length of it okay now i know by trial and error that that is down to this colored edge fall off okay so if you click on the colored edge fall off and then we do another test render there we go, it actually 
puts it all the way around the edge, very similar to a lightsaber. The thing I would say at the moment is we need a little bit more, don't we? We haven't got enough um, glow around the edges. So what we do is just try dialing this up on the edge and see if that changes it. Right, so that's actually give us, that's, that's fine, but all we need to do now is increase the, um, if we go back to details, we need to increase the outer radius. So let's put that in at about, what, 2.5 say. Put the inner radius in at one. Let's just try that, it might be too big. Well, that's not too bad because the inner white is supposed to be coming out of the hilt. If you come in here, you'll see, and if I render it there, the white part is coming out of the middle of the hilt and then the red is the glow that happens afterwards. So, yeah, I, I wouldn't say that's too bad. I just want also, while I'm just thinking about this, is I want to draw your attention to, to these, these dots at the top here on this visibility white section. They, they correspond to this inner and outer distance. Now, the reason I've done it at 75 and one at 70 is if you put them both in at 75 and then render it you get a completely square top okay like a cylinder and then it's come all the way through the end so if i spin that round there and then render it there it's come right to the end and it's a dead blunt stop now the lightsaber has got a tapered end to it so i mean let's try 65 just just to show you um what it does when you bring that back down you see and then you get this kind of softened end to the lightsaber okay it's just preference again or you know study the film and see which looks right i think that's a little bit too pointy this is why i'm i'm quite happy with it 70 and 75 so there's like five centimeter difference between the two and it just gives you that nice round on the edge Okay, what else can we do? Let's have a look. What else can we do to make... I'm going to have to have another piece, uh, another piece, another sip of coffee um, while I'm thinking about this at the moment. So what can we do to make this look more like a lightsaber? At the moment, it's not really bright enough. Maybe we need to have a look at the movement to see what we can do. Because if you look at the film, this thing glows so bright and it's flashing and flickering and doing all these nice things. So <clears throat> what can we do to improve that? Hang on a second. Okay, let's have a look at this. Under visibility, where it says brightness, let's dial that up to some ridiculous number. Let's put 800 in there. And then just, just pop back on a quick render. Ah. So we've got a much brighter center now just by dialing up there. Um, maybe it's a bit wide. So if we go back to details. Oh, now I just want to see because this didn't this doesn't always affect what you think it will on that on that side. You've still got that quite thick brightness. Right, I think it's down to this. If we slide the gradient across and then do a render. Oh, very interesting. It obviously wasn't that. So it probably it is that, but we need to add another, we need to add another one in there. Um, because what we want to do is try and, hmm, that's not working as expected. Let's, let's bring that up to there and get a tighter edge. Still got that yellow, still got the yellow. Um, let's take, let's take that one out. And now we just got the red, let's bring that one over. I'm trying to get a much brighter line in the center by messing with this. But all what's happening, let's just put that up. Let's see if we put that back up. It might not do anything, but I just want to put that back up and then see what we've got with these. Just playing around with these a little bit and just to see if we can get that white. And it's not giving us any white at all now. So let's bring that one back, that one right up. Does that do it? No. <laughs> uh, let's bring that, oh, okay. 
So, what does that give us if we just go? Yeah, we do need to go back there. Okay, fine. So let's just try bringing it in a lot slower because obviously there's too many changes. Ah, there we go. There we go. We get there in the end. This is the thing about this. Don't just, just keep trying it. Just don't give up. Just keep trying it and you will find an answer. Now that to me looks quite, uh, I've lost the, uh, again, don't forget this yellow thing, click and he's back. Okay. So if you, if you're too quick with your mouse and you lose your, your view, then you can always get it back quickly. Right now, what I want to do is I wanted to zoom in cause I wanted to render it there. And just see, we probably need to, yeah, let's just, oh, if you heard that, we've got one of the windiest, stormiest days of the year in, in the UK. And um, some things, I just need to have a quick check, some things are destroying themselves in the garden. So I just need to make sure things are not breaking too much. It's fine, I think. I'll carry on with this and I'll go and see if I've still got a house at the end of it. Um, yeah, so what I want to do here is I wanted to make sure that the light was inside the hilt of the lightsaber enough. There we go. So that's quite a nice beam of light. Right, the other thing that's happening here is the the red glow is still too solid. Okay? It looks too neat and solid. So what can we do with that? Let's have a look. Let's go on so we don't need shadow, we don't need photometric or caustics really for this. Um noise. We need noise. Right, so if we go to noise and we click both and then we change that to wavy turbulence for the type and then let's put the octaves up. I think they go up to eight. Let's get them up to eight. Let's get velocity right up to, well, let's try 200. Um, let's put a little bit of uh, that wind in there as well just to blow the thing about. Now what this will do is it will add a kind of turbulence effect to the light. So I don't know if you'll see it on here. I think we're gonna to have to do a render to show it. Yeah, so let me just put in a few frames. Let's have a look. Let's just go to about, let's go to about 20. I don't think it will take too long on, a, on, the, on the standard render. I think it'd be quite quick. So let's just, uh, let's just see what this does. What I'm hoping will happen is the noise and the wavy turbulence will just disturb the light so it's not a dead smooth column of light it will actually give it a little bit of movement while it's while it's being wielded around so i'll just let this render out for a few frames what did we say 20 didn't we yeah so yeah it's literally nearly done i just want to see if it moves that light around okay we're nearly there so another bit of coffee while we finish okay so we're there so if we rewind that and play, what are we getting any sort of, not really, it's not really disturbing it too much. Okay, now what else can we try? Um, we might need to bring up some, bring up some of these scales a little bit. So let's bring the velocity way up to a thousand. Um, uh, illumination scale wind let's probably put more let's, let's put 100 in there and 200 in there I, I really just want to see how much of this we need to alter before it starts to give us this this effect we want because we should be getting some kind of disturbance on this light. The other thing I need to check, hold on a second. The other thing I need to check is now we're doing, 
object glow lights. So the, no, it's not the object glow, is it? Um, we need to make sure. I think it's global illumination. Yeah, I think it's fine. I think it's all there. It's all going to show the lights. It's going to show all the effects of the lights. Lens effect. We haven't got the lens on. I don't know if we need that one, but uh, I just I really want this to let's see if there's something else we need to do first. Ambient show light visible. I don't think there is. A fall off. Try a fall off in there. See if that does anything. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I want the, I wanted it to move. I wanted it to glow. Now, I'll, I will probably find. I'll have a look at that in a second. But there is a better technique. This is why I'm not too worried that this one doesn't work as well as expected because there is a better way of doing this um, so if we if we now turn on the other Darth Vader character here right and I'll put these side by side and you'll be able to see them both at the same time then now there is another technique this is using a parallel light and we're trying to get that kind of glow and that look um, that was used in the films now there is another way and I'm, I found that using a material with a glow and a little bit of espresso. I know everyone goes, oh, I can't use espresso or whatever, but uh, this is literally just two nodes, link them up and, and we get the effect we want. So don't worry, I'll show you it step by step anyway. What we do here to make this light saber look better than the other one, in my opinion, is we need to start with a, a capsule not that big hopefully <laughs> right okay let's get this capsule um, so which one this again let's turn off the other um, character and then we'll just we know where we are in the scene right so we've got the lightsaber and then we're going to drop the capsule underneath the lightsaber and then if we go to tools and axis and center to parent, it will drop that capsule into there. Okay. And now I believe if we just spin it this way and we look at the, the increments there, if we go 90, I think that might be then putting that into the right place. So the capsule is far too long. So we need to bring that down to 75. It's also still too thick. 1.5 is that probably still too thick? Yes, let's go to one for now. Okay, then put that in there. And then let's just have a look. That looks not too bad at all. Okay. So how do we make this look like a lightsaber? Right, so we've got just, a, if I just render that and show you, we've just got um, an object in there. That's not really doing much. It's just an ob It's just, um, just a piece of geometry. There's no lighting, there's nothing happening. So what we need to do is create a texture, a material, sorry, a material. And we just want to use the uh, luminance channel and the glow. On the luminance, let's put that up to 400. On the glow, let's remove use material color so we can use our own color and let's pop in this orangey red glow. Okay, let's have a look at um, the radius. Let's bring that down to about three. Um, outer strength, let's go up to a thousand. Inner, 900. Random, 100 frequency 100 right capsule let's drop that onto it 
there we go. Now let's have a look at that and a quick view. Okay, so yeah, again, a little bit like the one we just did, it's a little bit too neat. It needs a little bit more disturbance. It needs to glow and flicker and do all these good things. So the good news is with this technique is we can achieve that so much more easier than we did on the other one. So what we have, and the other thing I'd, um, I'd like to show you is at the moment we are getting no red light, which you would imagine if something's intense and it's got all this red coming off of that, you would have a reflection from this. If I just move this round and show at this angle, there isn't any. There isn't any light coming off of that and going on to Darth Vader's character there. And we need we need that to happen. Okay. So what we do is we take the capsule and let's make a copy of that. So control and drag underneath. This one we need to um, uh, make editable and we are going to remove the, um, the material from that one and we're going to grab an area light from here okay let me put the area light just in the middle of the two and then the area light where we if you go to de the details tab on area light and then under area shape we choose object or spline and then we grab our editable capsule that we've just copied and we drop that into object there okay and what this is going to do it's going to put a, an area light which will reflect and give color out so what I want to do there for the general for the color of that light I want to put in the the red which is kind of there I want to put that in there um, and let's have a look now what else do we need to do we want to put some fall off on this so if we choose inverse square and then we and as you see on the model already look it's really starting to glow so we bring that down to say 50 see if that's going to be enough um, okay so let's just render that now and see if 50 is enough glow um, there is some but I think we need to go up a bit more so let's just put it up to about 200 so another render of that now that's to me I like that I mean you can mess with this number and say well 100 is more what I imagine some people might want it brighter some people might want it a little bit dimmer so you've, you've got that within the the fall off there um, with this number here under radius decay that's how quickly the light falls off if you don't put a fall off on um, you don't get any light there at all okay and if you put too big a fall off on like you saw you know you put that up to 500 you just you, you get like far too much light coming from it you see okay so I go somewhere about 100 so we have our we have our light it's emitting we've now made a copy of the capsule which is now emitting an area light onto the character let's just spin that around and show you again on on the on the face on the helmet so you know which has got the reflection so now you've got that nice glow coming from it so it looks a lot more realistic that is coming from this light source so we've got the capsule we've got the um with the glow on it and we've now just added this this secondary light as an area light which is giving this red glow right what else can we do what else can we do is that okay do we think that looks if we just do a quick render of that with it moving i'll just do a few frames like i did before are we are we happy with this look um let's just stop it there and just have a look it's always best to do this is just to see what you're doing as you go along okay so <laughs> it's like he's doing a little dance um for me i think we can do better i think we can do a bit better i'm not too convinced yet it's getting there but i would like to do a couple of more couple more steps on this to make it look even better the first one is i just want to put a slight taper 
on this lightsaber. I know they probably were cylindrical. I don't know if, if you, when you see the film though, they sometimes look like they taper slightly. So what I like to do, because we've now got an object to work with, if we click on capture all, and then we go onto this menu here, and then we go to taper, and if you hold down shift, it will become a child of the capsule object. And then we click on fit to parent. We take the curvature off here because we just want it to taper in a straight line. And then we just bring the strength up. Just bring that strength up and taper the end. Okay. Let's just have a look at whether that's done. Do we have to go that way or can we go the other way? Oh no, that's bringing it up. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so we can taper it in. But what we need to do, so say 40 on the strength. Um, we need to do the same. So if we just take the taper and then we hit control and then we drop it under the other capsule that we made, that will then apply taper to that one as well. So now if we have a quick look at it, I just think it's just starting to look a little bit better when it tapers, you know, rather than just a big cylinder sat there. It just, it looks better to me. So I like to do that just with the taper. Now, the final thing to do is I really want that red light that's coming off to really flicker. Okay, at the moment it's just, it's just glowing. But if this is a, a charged energy plasma, weapon <laughs> like you see on star wars it it just it makes all that noise and it's it's sparking and it's glowing so it needs to do something rather than just glow at a constant um brightness so what we do like i mentioned before we add a little bit of espresso to this to to, to randomize this light to flickering around so quite easy step really this it's not a difficult thing what we do is we choose our we choose our light just here and then you right click on it and you go to programming uh, programming tags and then we choose espresso right and what we do now is we take the light and we just drag that into this window and then over here we search for noise okay and then we find noise and we drag that in and then this little Let's just bring this up to here, make it a little bit bigger, make this one a bit bigger so you can see what's happening. All we do here is we take this little circle node, click on it, drag out this little line or wire to the blue, let go. And then we go to, I think, general. Um, is it general? Sorry, yeah, general um, and then intensity, okay? So it's noise, general, intensity, and that's it, okay? And what we do now is we just move that over to one side and just here you'll see the noise operator. And this is what will affect the brightness of that light. So let's put in like 200 frequency. Let's really make this thing move around. Let's put five in the scale, probably three there. And just here it says, little box here that says positive only right so we want this lightsaber to, to really be bright and then it to go brighter and then dim off a bit and go brighter but not to ever go negative numbers it wants to be as bright as we've got it originally and then only get brighter okay if you if you if you don't check that the lightsaber will look like it's going out you know it'll go di really dim so we don't want that we want it to just keep getting brighter and right I hope that made sense. <laughs> so yeah, tick the um, positive only box so we don't have it going dimmer. Right, that should, let's just close Espresso now. We don't need that. So yeah, that was it. Not a lot of Espresso there at all. So what happens now is if we go to the light, click on the light, and then we click on the, gen is it the, gen yeah, the general tab. Just here, look, you'll see that this has changed. This used to be a little diamond. It's now changed to this shape, which means it's being controlled by an espresso node. Okay. So if we just play, you'll see and watch here. Watch that intensity there. If we just press the play button now, you see that? 
it's jumping around, flickering. It's not drop, dropping below 100, it's staying above it because we, we checked the positive only box. And what that's going to do is when we go to render that, so I'll just show you what's going to happen now in the render. It's going to add the glow at different intensities. Right, so if you put enough frames in here, I'll just let it run to 20, then I'll show you what this is doing. And this is going to just look so much more convincing as a, as like an energy heat source uh, uh, lightsaber than it does if it look it, it could look like a fluorescent light if you don't, where it's just glowing constantly all the time. This is a highly charged plasma energy source, isn't it? So it needs to kind of spark and really flash around. Okay, so we've done those. Let's just see if that's doing it. See that? Probably need a few more frames to show that. But that is now flickering and all the light is now coming out from the area light. And I think really out of the two, if we go back to my one of my original, let's have a look which one I did where we've got the two characters in one. So here we go, the one on the left um, uses the, the capsule with the taper on it and the area light um, that shines onto Darth Vader there and then we've added that um, espresso um, noise to mess with the intensity of the, the edge. And then this one on the right uses a parallel light and it uses a wavy turbulence in the noise. Okay, so they are completely separate. One of them uses a light and one of them uses a material. Um, up to you which one you want to use. I'm showing you showing you both methods. I know which one I prefer. Um, but up to you. Have fun playing with these effects. See what you can do. See what you can come up with. Um, leave me some comments below if you've got other ways of doing this because there may be more ways. You know, I don't want to use plugins. I want to see if we can do it all within cinema as it is you know um, i'm on version 25 r25 um so that you know there's new things all the time being added to this program so the, there may even be a, a, a much nicer way of doing this so if you've got a better way please let me know and, uh, and i will start to look at that as well you know we're all learning aren't we you know i can teach you but maybe there's stuff that certainly i don't know that you can teach me uh that will be it for now then i will speak to you real soon in the next video which will probably be something star warsy again because i want to do this and there's lots and lots of different things in star wars that we need to um master and then we'll move on to lots of other things i may even do best um effects that i can that i i think cinema has and you know kind of list it as a top 10. that's all coming up i'll speak to you real soon my name's mike from visual animation speak to you soon bye for now